Let's talk about the second most important commercial plastic, right? The one that is used the second most, and that's polypropylene, PP, right? How do you get it? You replace one of the hydrogens with a methyl group, right? So instead of ethylene, which again had carbon, bonded the carbon, and you had these hydrogen groups coming off the side, and that was the repeat unit, instead of having all four of those as hydrogens, we're going to replace one with a CH3 group. That becomes the repeat unit for polypropylene, okay? So it looks like this structure, you can see the methyl group off the side. Here they've shown it where it's always coming off the same side. We'll talk about uh, the name for that a little bit later. Um, what's great about polypropylene? Why is it the second most common one? Well, you have it all around you. Here's one right here, right? The caps of bottles are very, very commonly polypropylene. It's rugged. It's chemically inert. It has a lot of the same properties of polyethylene, but it's harder, right? It's a little bit stronger, and it's more heat resistant. It has better heat resistance, right? Also, it has the lowest density of all the commercial plastics, right? Its density is only 0.895 or 0.92 grams per cc, which makes it very low, which means you can mass produce lots of components at the lowest weight possible. Um, another interesting thing is that it can be relatively crystalline. It crystallizes, again, meaning that these chains line up nicely and they have these alternating groups like that, but they line up pretty nicely. Um, however, uh, it could be also amorphous, meaning these chains are kind of all over the place, right? And what's interesting is that the density of those two things is pretty similar. Normally, you'd expect the crystalline to have a much higher density because it's packing together nicely. Um, that's not really the case because it has this relatively large side group sticking off the side, right? Um, and so it makes it so the density doesn't change very much if it's crystalline versus amorphous, which can be uh, beneficial for some processing techniques, okay? Um, it has very good fatigue resistance. So if you cycle this thing over and over and over, it's not prone to fatigue failure as much as some other plastics. Um, they use it for lots of things. Packaging, textiles, you can make ropes. They make carpets out of it. They'll make parts, um, containers, labware. You can see some of the examples here. Um, it is subject to chain degradation by heat and UV, right? So if you shine UV light on it, like a rope left out in the sun, which has constantly you know, illuminated by UV light, you need to worry about free radicals forming and attacking the chains and breaking them. So what they'll usually do is they'll add things like UV absorbers. They do this to your tires, by the way. The reason that your tires, rubber, right, of your tires, they would also be subject to the same sort of degradation. They make them black by adding carbon black to that, and that acts as a UV absorber. So it prevents it from damaging the polymer because it gets absorbed by the carbon, right? You can do the same things with polypropylene. You can add UV absorbers. Um, something that they'll commonly do is they'll mix it with ethylene, right? So instead of having this repeat unit over and over, imagine if you mixed it with, you know, the next one next to it was maybe an ethylene monomer, right, where you had hydrogens, right? By making this and by doing it in a random way, um, they found that a couple things happened. First off, you reduce the density, you reduce the crystallinity a little bit, so the melting point does go down a little bit, but you also can improve the transparency. It makes it so light is more likely to pass through. So if you want things like here, transparent, uh, labware, because you want to be able to see the liquid inside of there, that's something that you can do to increase the transparency. So this is polypropylene. Again, it's a material that is all around us all the time. And if you've seen the PP on the recycle symbol, that little triangle with the PP next to it, that's polypropylene.